cream and cheese. And if I'm feeling a little bit of whiskey, you know, uh, a little bit of guacamole as well, you know, goes a very, very long way. And if I'm am on the keto diet, uh, I'll, I'll get rid of corn, get rid of the rice and beans, and just have all that. And it's great. However, that being said, no more Chipotle. Uh, we now have an exciting uh, Super Smash Bros. match ahead of us. We have Ike and Squirtle, you know, the, the, the funny big sword boy and the funny little turtle boy. Um, gonna be starting off on PS2, very, very classic, but Omega with a pretty good lead right now, forcing Dan offstage, putting his double jump. So, you know, Mega now has a pretty good idea of how Dan the Man is going to be getting back onto the stage. And so it's going to be up to him to be able to capitalize on that lead a little bit later. Dan is struggling to get a single hit in until once, you know, Mega landed on shield. I'm pretty sure he has enough frame advantage uh, that he could, like, you know, roll out or something. But he just decided to shield. So that's a pretty good grab coming from Dan. Hmm, I think Mega had intended to land on the platform. Good catch on the jump. Mega has no other resources except that air dodge. And Dan flipped the coin. He guessed wrong on the direction. And look at that Charizard yoinking that stock away, saying, Yeah, remember how you just got a lead in the beginning? Not anymore, buddy. Oh my goodness. That up is so potent. Dara, please tell me you tell them to double wrap it. So, um, I will be discussing more about my Chipotle order after the game. Um, so we'll go into a little bit more about the, you know, intricacies of double wrapping. The amount of neutral is coming through Mega. I'm, I've got to say, like, a lot of them are connecting right now. He has a very good idea of how Dan wants to be positioning himself. He's, you know, controlling his drift very, very well. Not able to actually get the out of shield punish. Good fade back from Dan the man. Um... Look, I love the way that Mega right now is just spacing himself. He's giving Dan a little bit of space to push in, maybe um, overextend a little bit, potentially get a whiff punish, but Mega misspacing that side B, not able to actually snap onto the ledge or even hit Dan. He just barely finished it above the ledge, and just before he snapped, uh, Charizard said, you know what, it's, it's not smash time, buddy. Oh boy. Definitely not a good place to be in. Good use of the nail for coverage. Such a nice, all-encompassing hitbox. Definitely made the most out of his damage. Nicely spaced under the platforms, too. Understanding that Mega would have whiffed right into his face. Uh, but he has to respect the landing lag or lack thereof on a quick draw. A little bit more. Uh, that move is just, like, <laughs> it is quick. You know, as, as the name implies. When, when you land, you immediately land and you, you can mash out an F-Tilt all you want, baby. Just like that, Mega right now is back in it. Gonna be starting off with Ivy, so again, all he needs is one Razor Leaf um, or a Jump Lead, and that could just as easily spell the end of the stock. Mega had the lead, you saw the weight. However, he was unable to actually capitalize on the switch. And that up smash is not gonna be able to take it quite yet, uh, but the forward a really, really nice edge guard. Um, Mega, you know, he kept good covering high. Uh, I just feel like Dan had a very good idea of from where he was going to be trying to get back onto the stage. Mega could definitely afford to, you know, try to recover low. And even though that's really, really risky with Ike, you do have to mix that up sometimes. Because otherwise, you know, you're just going to get your recovery stuffed out. So, on the topic of double wrapping your burritos um, at Chipotle, I think it's much better to either A, get a bowl and then order a side of chips, or, or B get a bowl and then just ask for the tortilla separately and like kind of like you're eating like African Najira almost right like you'd rip off a piece of tortilla and then like scoop it up um scoop up a bit of your chipotle bowl with it I think that's definitely the play um that way you maximize the amount of actual filling that you're getting um in the form of the bowl um and then you're still able to get the nice fluffy warm and chewy tortilla So that's definitely the big brain play because the number one goal of Chipotle is, you know what, they have massive portions, how can we make them even bigger? You know, how do you get as much bang for your buck as possible? So, so that's that's how I'd recommend uh, you approach it at, at Chipotle. Either get chips and you turn your bowl into like a nice little dip or, um, you know, like a nice little nacho platter or, uh, you know, you just, you just, you know, as a former Chipotle employee, your order sounds like hell to wrap. Oh yeah, goodness gracious. I would never ask for a burrito like that. 
But that being said, game two, uh, you know, I feel like Mega is a very good, like, set player. I feel like he's always really, really weakest in his game one, and then he just makes really, really good adjustments. He ages like fine wine. Call him Gouda Cheese because, you know, he's about to be smoked soon. I mean, mm, that analogy didn't work as well as I thought it would. Uh, that being said, Mega looking to get something started. You see the way that he is circulating around the platforms really, really safely, making sure Dan can't get any rising aerials off on him. He's timing those auto cancels very, very brilliantly as well. How is he going to be controlling the coin? And unfortunately, ever so slightly mistiming his neutral air. Uh, you know, Dan still having the intangibility from his neutral get up. That forward is brilliant. Is he going to be able to flare blitz back onto the stage? He is. And Mega, unfortunately, missing the punish. You have to understand how big your window is to actually punish Charizard after he bonks his head either on the side of the stage or on shield. Uh, you can quite literally run off and down it. You know, as as Ness, I am able to jump out of shield and land my frame 21 down it. So if you can do that as Ness, you can do that with just about any other character. Mega doing exactly what he does best, trying to steal a stock from the corner with one of those up -bees. You're not gonna get a buddy, not 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 quite yet. You know, if Dan falls through that, you know, so be it. But uh, you know, <laughs> there's really no reason for you to do that right now. I really like the way that Mega does actually fight his way out of the corner. Oh my goodness, what a clank! That was. Definitely a little bit odd. Pretty blue champ. Yeah, Mega right now is making really, really good use of his quick draws. However, this time he is going to get his jump called out by that up smash. Has to definitely be really, really careful. Um, people do not anticipate how good Charizard is actually with calling out jumps with either his up smash or his up beat. He does a phenomenal job of it regardless. Back throw. That's going to be the back here, but not actually able to connect it. Um, would have definitely put Mega in quite the pickle. No, no, uh, no good. Can... Ugh, I, I really regret saying that one too. I should really cool it with my uh, food analogy sometimes. I just sometimes kind of be spitting. Mega had the great idea. I love the way that he uses his down air on the platforms to sort of call out any attempt to catch his landing on them. Uh, but Squirtle, being such a tiny little piss baby, was just barely able to get um, under the hitbox. Mega had the right idea. He caught on to Dan's like sort of um, defensiveness or his tendency to retreat when pressured. Tried to get the dash grab, but Dan still had enough time to throw out a button. And boy, did he land it! Right now, Dan getting a little bit too antsy with these uh, callouts on the jump. Nice high recovery. Mega was definitely not anticipating something so aggressive. Good empty hop to try to catch a landing, but. Once again, gonna jump right into that up smash and down. He is still in it. Charizard can steal those stocks without a question. That's a down tilt into the up air. And one more up air at 104% is gonna take it. Why does Ike swing so hard? Why is this sword so massive and powerful? So, I want to talk to you guys about something, and it's actually kind of important before we jump into game 3. Recently on Twitter, I have been seeing a lot of people talk about how they really like boneless wings. The name boneless wings, to me, is really upsetting. Because you know what a boneless wing is? It's a chicken nugget. You know where it comes from? The breast. Has no correlation to the wing at all. Surely the wing is a derivative of the breast. But uh, a boneless wing is just a chicken nugget. In fact, I'd argue the people who say they like boneless wings are, are either A, too lazy to try to debone, um, you know, nice proper drum or flat, or B, they're just too embarrassed to say that they like chicken nuggets. If you like chicken nuggets, that's fine. Just please, for the love of God, call it a chicken nugget. You know, but it's not wings, so difficult. Boneless wings sounds less juvenile. Well, it's the name. It's a nugget. What's so juvenile about a nugget? 
Nuggets are for babies. Little babies yeah. eat nuggies. I'm not a baby. I'm a man. Well, you know what? You know what would be even more manly? If you weren't so insecure about the fact that you're eating nuggets, that you'd have to rebrand them as boneless wings. It'd be, it'd be more manly. It would be more manly. like, give the nuggies to me, but I want my nuggies. It would be much more manly if you were to say, yeah, I'm a man, and I like to eat nuggies. And, you, know what turns, you, know, you know what the difference is between chicken nuggets and, and, and boneless wings? Chicken nuggets are made from a slurry that is then fried, as opposed to boneless wings, which are just straight up meat that is sliced. Into little giblets and then fried. Um, slathered in sauce for your convenience. So, yes and no. I've seen fast food nuggets be made from a slurry. And Make nuggets out of incineroar and, and commentate the set. Bye. But here's the thing. Wait, wait one thing. Uh, I've seen chicken nuggets like those from Chick fil A, for instance. Those are whole chunks of uh, chicken breast. You know? So they can be either or. That's just like a stylistic thing. That being said, and the man, the game three is going to be switching out to, to the big cat, to the ferocious feline, considering all, I'm never going to say that again. I have a good at that immediately. I'm going to be getting the grounded down into the four leader. Is he going to be able to get the edge guard? He is not. That was really good catching that tech. And then that option coverage from Dan the man was very spicy. Um, yeah. Nothing else to say there. Definitely made the most out of just how active and Senegal's command grab is down throw into up smash. Damn! Slow down for the love of God. He is on fire right now. Get it because it's is a fire type. <clears throat> I get it. Yeah, no, I'm glad that you do. Uh <laughs> Right now, Dan, he's really, really slowing down the pace. Oh, wow. Not actually having enough plus ribs to be able to get the throw into the up air. And Dan is in a terrifying spot. What a mash for Mega. Good lord, that might have been able to kill, especially because he had his revenge on deck in that moment. The next hit that Dan deals might take Ike stock at 87%. That's, that's a terrifying prospect. Ooh, any tip of the up, he still hit. Very surprising. Yeah, I like that Mega right now is playing a lot more like dash in shield, dash out shield, dash back shield rather. Um, and it's forcing like Dan to, like the only way if he were to punish that would be if he were to commit to a command grab. Which I think is relatively reactable. That being said, what an unnecessary way to finish that stock. Mega just said, yeah, I'm gonna hold that. I'm gonna hold my neutral B when you're at 160%. But you know what? It was, can't say nothing about it. What was that DI? Mega, you were at 100%. You little piss baby. I never want to see that again. Mega's trying to get something started. He is trying to take out Dan with all these empty hops in. <sighs> Mm, yeah, I mean, so hard to get anything started, um, especially at such a low percent. Ike doesn't have the fastest buttons, right? Um, only like at about a mid percent is when he really starts getting those devastating conversions on heavyweights. You know, I always talk about how like Incineroar is one bad design decision away from being a high tier. If he had better mobility, he would be so such an incredible character. Like, people do not talk about enough about how much potential Incineroar has. I really think he has a fantastic design. That being said though, Mega right now, keeping Incineroar in the corner, giving him every so, uh, you know, slight amount of space just to be able to go in and get that dash grab. Mm, unable to punish that whiff command grab. You really, really have to be on top of those kinds of things when you are fighting Incineroar. Nail into up air, very nice, classic, bread and butter, you know, a little bit of sourdough with some cultured Kelly Gold salted butter on that one, because that was a fine conversion, if I say so myself, he's gonna get side beat again, off stage, just a terrifying place to be in, tries to go through the two frame down tilt, is not able to find it though, <sighs> this is a very tough place for Mega to be in, this could easily be the stock, uh oh, Mm, I don't like the fact that Dan backed off. I know he didn't want his stock to be stolen, but he could have theoretically just kept Mega in this revenge loop. Just kept on stacking and stacking and stacking. Oh my goodness. He is not dead. That's, uh, that's quite surprising. 
Look at him. He's scaling Dan. Dan. Dan is sitting in his shield. He is quaking in his boots, unable to get this grab. This is still extremely doable for the Mega. Doesn't get the early hit of dash attack. Only the late hit and is still able to survive. No! Mega! Mega! I guess Dan the Man takes it over the Mega 2-1. to one. What an SD for Mega. So unfortunate. So unfortunate. Also, Devin, a uh, good character held back by mobility. What have you heard that before? Enlighten me. Puff. Twenty year old name. What do you mean? Daniel oh, Kirby's twenty years he... old. He has the brain of a baby. It's oh, kind of that awful. one. Yeah, I don't know about that. I still think Kirby kind of sucks, if, even if you have better mobility. <laughs> little, little dumb pig puff baby. Woohoo! Look, Incineroar is so good. He has incredible buttons. He has early place on conversions. He has one of the strongest mechanics in the game in the form of revenge. He has easily one of the best, if not the best, command grab just because of how active it is and its ability to both call out spot dodges, goals, and shields. Like, 